Hello everyone, we're going to study now about the different types of speeches according to the manner of delivery. So once again, I'm Porte. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. So let's start now. Once again, hello everyone. Welcome. There are different types of speeches according to the manner of delivery. So here, we're going to see the differences of those kinds of speeches. So let's have now the lesson objective to distinguish the extemporaneous, impromptu, manuscript, and memorized speeches. So at this point, let's have first a quick survey so that everybody, so that uh, you know, okay, if everybody is, or everybody has still that stage fright okay so let's see number one how often do you get up in front of people okay gaano kadalas daw that's according to this one no is it every day a few times a week monthly or a few times a year so alin sa dalwa okay number two how bad do you do your nerves get Okay, nervous, nervous ka ba every time, sometimes, that you're going to talk in front of many people. So, not bad at all. I love the spotlight. I get few butterflies, but it's not that bad. I get nauseated and feel like I'm going to be sick. I feel paralyzed. Every time that you're in front of these people, talagang you feel like, parang, oh my God, ano to? Hindi ko to alam. Okay? So, that's the difference. So number three. Do you have any rituals to help you calm down before presentation or before the performance? May mga ganun tao kasi, okay, before their performance, of course, they shout or uh, they pray or kung ano lang para makalmante lang, of course, ang kanilang sarili. Yes, I do some breathing exercises or meditation. Yes, I get moving physically. No, I'm too nervous to concentrate on anything else. No, I'm too sick for the presentation. Yung mga ganun tao no, na talaga namang, uh, for them it's so difficult to, to speak in front of many people. So, how about number four? Have you ever had an alcoholic drink to calm your nerves before a presentation or performance? Misan ba before, for example, when you were in high school or even up to now at this point of your time, are you going to drink a little bit of wine, for example, or nakikipag inumang ka muna bago ka magsalita in front of many people? Yes, every time. Yes, but just when I'm more nervous than usual. No, never. No, but I thought about it, okay? Because there are many people talaga that it's so difficult for them to, to talk or to present something to have their performance without any liquor or without any wine, for example. That's their difference. Okay, number five. Has picturing people in their underwear ever worked for you? Or sometimes you're going to have your picture in your mind kung anong dapat mong gawin para pag naisip mo itong picture na to, sa isipan mo talaga namang ikaw ay uh, okay lang, tumataas or whatsoever, na ikaw ay giging strong, no? Yes, every time, that is it your answer? Or yes, most of the time? Or seldom or not at all, wala lang. Sa ibang tao, okay, every time that you talk, wala lang, wala lang, iniisip yung ibang tao. Yung iba naman talaga nag-iisip na kung ano-ano, okay? So next time, of course, the other one is number six. A week prior to your presentation, how often do you practice your presentation or performance? May mga ganun namang style, no? Uh, isang linggo bago dumating yung iyong presentation or your performance mo, talagang ikaw ay practice and practice. Practice makes perfect, remember. At, you know, at, at this point of my time, ganun din ang gawa ko, I, I kept on reading, I kept on practicing my line. Para, you know, at this point, uh, I'm not going to uh, embarrass myself, okay, in front of these people or in front of my students. Is it twice a day, once a day, just a couple of times when I remember? Or I intend to practice but I get so worried that I put it off? Okay, ako talaga, on my part, uh, practice ako ng practice. Even si MCing, it's uh, a good practice also. Kahit na alam na alam mo na talagang you ask people, you practice what you're going to do during the... Uh, uh, during the time that you are in front of these people, syempre, okay? Number seven, do you use any type of notes during your presentation or performance? 
Uh, ako on my part kasi I have my mini notebook. I have my notebook, okay? Wherein I can, uh, of course, uh, use that, syempre, uh, as, as, as serve as notes. Kung ano dapat ko pang gawin, syempre. Ano? Uh, ako, meron ako sa mga bags. I have uh, notebooks talagang daladala. Even the ball pens that I have. Kasi it's really very important talaga that you have this thing, okay? Para sometimes, kahit may tablet ka, hindi mo malilimutan syempre kung ano ang dapat mong gawin. Uh, is it always? Is it always? Yes, only when I feel uh, I need them? No, I can just memorize some keywords. No, I can do a speech even without it. May mga ganun naman tao, no? For them, it's so easy for them uh, to do this thing without notes or with notes. Alin ba talaga ang gusto nila? Anyway, this is the end of the survey that we had uh, this morning, okay? That we have, rather, uh, today. So, uh, what's the next? So, what you're going to do now is, of course, to add n the corresponding number to your answers, okay? Add the number corresponding to your answers. And you check the degree of your stage fright. Gaano ba ka kalala ang stage fright mo, okay? Or pagkatakot mo in front of many people if you are talking. So, tingnan natin. So, uh, of course, sabi dito, pag, uh, if you get one, point, uh, 1 to 7, always knows to handle oneself in front of the crowd. Okay, wow. You're, you're, I think you're a professional by, by this score. 8 to 14, knows to handle oneself in front of the crowd occasionally. And then, uh, 15 to 21, often struggle in front of the crowd. Ito yung kilig-kilig ka na. Hindi mo maintindihan kung ano ginagawa mo na, no? 22 to 28, dreads to be in front of the crowd. Parang mamamatay ka na ang feeling mo talaga. So, ito yung pagkakaiba. So, now, alam mo na kung gaano ka, ka ang degree, no? Nang iyong level, ng, nagkakaroon ka ng stage fright, okay? So, at this point, let's, uh, let's study now the types of uh, speeches according to delivery. Ito na tayo this time so that we will know the difference ng mga ito kung ano-ano, okay? Although sometimes talaga, we hear people saying all of this. Okay, that's extempo or that is, uh, for example, uh, that's impromptu speaking. Okay, let's have the extemporaneous speech. Tingnan natin what are the difference kung ano ang mga pagkakaiba ng mga ito, syempre. So, uh, the most popular style of speaking is the extemporaneous, okay? So, this is done by speaking from notes. Speaking from notes is advantageous because this leaves the speaker to develop and maintain direct eye contact and the free use of body movements and gestures producing a more dynamic speech. It promotes a more spontaneous, unstructured, and conversational speech delivery since what have been prepared are just notes and not the exact words of the speech. Lastly, the speaker is given opportunity to adjust and adapt to the listeners. So, uh, in some schools, colleges, or uh, high schools, talagang mayroon sila sometimes, no? especially in their, for example, English Fest, nagkakaroon sila ng contest for extempo, for example. Uh, bubunot sila, okay, ng topic, and then they are given, for example, five minutes to think kung ano ang dapat nilang gawin. Uh, at doon na uh, mimili yung mga judges kung sinong mananalo. Uh, by this point, syempre, talaga, you, you need a note here. Talagang hindi to take down mo yung mahalaga para hindi ka mawala, para dire-diretso ka pa rin, syempre. So, ano tong extemporaneous? Anong description? Speaking with limited preparation. Syempre, nag-prepare nag, nag ka for for example, for five minutes. After five minutes, kailangan mo na talaga na na you're going to discuss this in front of these people and then guided by notes or outline. The reason you have the notes, this, this is really very important. As I've told you before, all my bags have uh, paper and pen. Delivered conversationally, talaga, okay? And then most popular type. This is most popular type because ito ang ginagawa lagi sa mga contests, sa mga schools natin. So, how about the speaking situation? So, sa nothing to ginagawa. So, when you are a candidate for a post in a student government and you deliver your campaign speech before a voting public, or when you are assigned to report a topic in class, sometimes your teacher will ask you to report something or to discuss the minutes of the meeting last time. So, what you're going to do is just to take down some of the notes or you're going to get your notes. Siyempre, mas, para mas maintindihan natin kung ano ang nangyayari para sunod-sunod din because 
there is an outline also. Anong advantages nito? Okay, one, it helps you look confident because you have the notes nga. Feeling mo talagang alam na alam mo ito. Okay? Hindi ka mawawala because you have the, the outline at the same time. Kung ano yung sunod-sunod. It engages the audience. When you are, uh, for example, explaining to the audience at the same time, you can ask them, the audience, no? Feel na feel mo talaga. Na alam na alam mo ito. Kasi you have the notes, remember? That's extent. Okay? What's the disadvantage? May not have adequate time to plan, organize, and rehearse. Because nga, pupunting oras ang binigay sa iyo. So what you're going to do is, perhaps sometimes, or, or for those people, talaga you cram. Talagang bilisan-bilisan ka, okay? O ano yung, ano yung na-note natin? Ano yung ating na-takedown noong panahon na nagsasalita ito? For example, itong ating speaker. So, kailangan doon na i-report agad right after him. So, what you are going to do? Siyempre, kailangan ikaw yung mabilis din dyan. That's the disadvantage. Lalo na kung ikaw uh, uh, you, you you feel nervous easily. Okay? So, difficult. So, what are the tips that you are going to do? Okay. Of course, you create an outline, as I've told you. Napakalaga ng may outline. And then, organize your points logically. Most important, least important, or vice versa. To least important, ha? Pwede ang gawin mo muna yung pinakamahalaga, papunta sa hindi naman mahalaga, okay? Or sa hindi mahalaga, papunta sa pinakamahalaga ang gagawin mo para hindi ka mawala. Do sa mga facts na yung isasabi. Or, you're going to use uh, and... Uh, the, the real-life experiences as your examples, this is really very effective. Ito ang ginagawa ng iba, yung mga nangyayari sa kanilang buhay, yun ang ginagawa nilang extempo, yun ang ginagawa nilang uh, panimula para mas okay. And then you're going to manage your time well. Dapat manage mo ang time mo, dapat alam mo ang, kung ano ang gagawin mo, dapat talaga practice. This is really very important. So the last one is rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Talaga magre-rehearse ka, magpa-practice ka. Okay? Para at the same time, talaga sinasabi ko, Para hindi ka papahiya, okay, doon sa iba na mga tao na makikinig sa iyo, syempre. That's really very, very important na wag natin kalilimutan talaga yung pag -re Okay? So, let's have now the guidelines. So, number one, you're going to widen the vocabulary. One of the drawbacks of extemporaneous speaking is the lack of exact wordings. It is then important that vocabulary be broadened so that accurate Physiologies will be used. Okay, anong, anong, anong dapat mong gawin dito? Dapat ikaw, as a person, if you would like to be a good speaker, dapat you're going to read many books and then you're gonna ask people, hindi lang ikaw basta babasahin mo, but at the same time, you're going to do your own research. And then even even the time that you're going to utter words, how are you going to, for example, to, to pronounce words, okay? So in other words, pronunciation is really very important also. Pag ikaw ay isang public speaker, dapat ay broad. Marami kang alam ng mga salita. Para so, that, uh, so, so that you can explain things to people. Okay? So number two, uh, be prepared with proper notes. That's really very important. Having notes is an advantage in extempo speaking. However, notes that can't be understood by the speaker is equivalent to speaking without notes at all. Okay? So therefore, it is suggested that when preparing speech notes, the speaker should write the framework in an index card. Okay. So, dapat ikaw ay, as a speaker, as I've told you, if you're talking here, ha, about extemporaneous, dapat ikaw ay prepared ka kung anong notes ang dapat mong ihanda for this. Siyempre, you have the index card. Okay. Index card color. That's the the number one, okay, that you're going to, to prepare. Index card color. This must be light colored so that whatever written in it will easily be read, okay? So, dapat yung mga may index card na may mga kulay-kulay para alam mo, okay, yung pagkakaiba. How about the pen or the ball pen that you're going to use? Uh, the color and thickness of the pen must be considered. It may be thick enough for the speaker to quickly read the notes when speaking. As the pen color, red may be used for words to be emphasized and black or blue for words which do not need much emphasis. Okay, napakalaga nito. Talaga, as I've told you, if you're talking about extent uh, speaking, the index card color or the pen. Kung wala ka naman index card, syempre yung mga paper na lang or yung mini notebook. Ay, may mini notebook. So, number three is speak with the frame. What is that? A speaker using the extemporaneous type has the time to prepare notes but not the exact speech. Thus, having already framework of the speech just like the, uh, just like the following that I'm going to discuss is really very, very helpful. Okay. 
Napakalaga nun. So, what is that frame that we're talking? That's the outline here. What are those outlines, syempre, na ating pinag-uusapan? So, it is important because it gives the speaker a general description or plan stating the essential features of the speech but not into the details. This may be through a topic outline or a phrase outline. Napakalaga ng outline. Ito yung pagkakasunod-sunod. Kung baga sa teacher, you have the uh, lesson plan. Okay? This one is the outline. Okay? Pagkakasunod-sunod. Of course. And then what's that um, letter B is the concept map. This is a visual representation of ideas and thoughts to be delivered. This can be used to graphically display the relationship between ideas for a speech and as a speaker, notes for delivery. Not only the outline na sunod-sunod, pero dapat alam mo, okay, napipicture mo, naiisip mo yung idea kung saan ang punta ng speech mo, which is really, really very important. So we have also, before that, we have also the three steps in studying your extemporaneous topic. So number one is to identify the type of extemporaneous question that you have to answer. Number one, of course, is, is it a question of fact? So, this type of question is typically answerable by yes or no. It revolves around whether something is true or not, existent or not. So, dapat alam natin, you're going to ask, is it a question of fact? Ito ba'y katotohanan or what? Example, is serious crisis a problem of the whole world? Okay, it is a question. Tinatanong natin. So, number next is, is it a question of value? It is, uh, it is centered on whether a topic is good or bad, moral or immoral, just or unjust. Example, is it better for the European nations to step in and aid Syria or ignore the country's civil crisis? So, the value that we learned, for example, we should have to what? We should have to picture also at the same time here, okay? Anong pinaglalaban dito? So, dapat alam natin yan if we are talking about STEM. Next is, of course, is it a question of policy? Is it, uh, it is focused on what policy or rules should be followed. We're talking about the laws here, perhaps. Example, should European countries enforce laws to accommodate Syrian refugees? Okay, so you're going to, this is actually the three steps in studying your extemporaneous topic. Okay, what kind of topic are you going to tackle or to discuss, for example, okay, to your students or to, to the audience? Of course, next is, of course, you're going to determine, this is the continuation, huh? uh, number two is determine the purpose appropriate to your topic. What now is the purpose? What's the goal of your, uh, what's, what's the goal of talking, for example? Okay, number three is stick to your topic and look at all of the sides and angles of the problem. In other words, do not be biased. You should be fair in every, in, in every time, that, for example, that you are talking. So, here is the example or the sample outline for an extemporaneous speech. You can see that, okay, the introduction, and then under that, A, B, C, you have the body, the main point one, and then some point one, the evidence and the statistics, and then up to the conclusion, okay, uh, very important is introduction, the body, and the conclusion, okay. So, of course, in the conclusion, the closing attention getter, in the introduction, are you going to get, of course, the opening attention get there? Are you going to get the attention of these people or of your audience? And then in the closing or in the conclusion, that's the closing attention getter or restatement, of course, of the thesis or review of main points here. That's really very, very important. Okay. Next, of course, of the types of speech according to the manner of delivery is the impromptu speech or the impromptu speaking. So, if we're talking about impromptu speech, a speaking method with little or even without advanced preparation. It is done if a person is asked to speak off the cuff or at the spur of the moment. Since it is done in ad lib, impromptu speakers are inclined to be more conversational to their audience. They tend to speak more directly and more convincingly to their audience. Accordingly, a more genuine speech is produced, okay? What is that impromptu speech? Ito yung, sa madaling salita, so that you can understand, ito yung tinanong pa ngayon, ngayon na rin ang sagot. Okay, can you explain now what is the blah, blah, blah? For example, can you explain now what happened to the meeting? And then ngayon na yon, without any preparation, okay? Because the reason it is called as the impromptu speaking. Next, of course, is the description. 
of impromptu speaking. Speaking without advanced preparation, wala ka rito ka, ka handa-handaan, wala ka rito kahandaan, okay, basta tinawag ka na lang. Unrehearsed speech, walang practice-practice dito. Ngayon na, ngayon na ka na magsasalita. Spoken conversationally, kung bagay kung ano yung masasabi mo, yun na yun, wala na tayong magagawa, okay? And then, speaking situation, ito yung in an event where you are asked to say a few words, Halimbawa, dumating ka sa isang event na kung saan biglang tinawag ka ng MC na hindi mo alam na tatawagin ka pala. Okay? And then, first day at work or in class or during an interview. Yan, it is an example of impromptu speaking. How are you going to explain your life in a province, for example? Okay? Uh, will you please, introdu- uh, will you please uh, introduce yourself? Okay? Uh, for example, uh, uh, what can you say about the situation of the country today? So, yan yung mga impromptu speaking. Uh, what is the advantages? Spontaneous or natural speaking, more focused and brief. So this one, talagang, ito yung natural conversation kasi ito yung walang kahandaan talagang uh, whether you like it or not, you're going to give your, your your point of view, for example, or your idea about this thing. Siyempre, no, talagang kailangan focus, nakafocus ka ito at kailangan iklian mo lang. Especially if you do not know what you're going to do. Siyempre, okay? What's the disadvantages here? Disadvantages, tendency to be disorganized kasi nga, you're not Uh, familiar with this impromptu speak na bigla kang tinawag, hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo syempre, okay? Hindi mo alam. Walang kaplano-plano. There's no frame here. There's no outline. So, yun ang problema natin. Next is lacks connection with the audience. Kasi nga, perhaps you are not really that prepared. Kaya, hindi mo alam. Wala, nawawalan ka ng connection sa students, okay? Not only to the students, but to the audience as well. To your listeners or to your audience in front of you. Nerve-wracking for inexperienced speakers and beginners. Talagang ito ay sobrang nervyos na nervyos ka rito kasi bigla kang tinawag in front of thousands of people na magsasalita about a certain thing. What are the tips here? Once you are requested to say something, pause for a moment to plan in your head what to say. Okay, so kailan pag tinawag hindi agad magnervous nervous doon, but kalmantin mo ang sarili mo, okay? Para makapag-isip ka ng mas okay. State your main point briefly and deliver it at a pace your audience can follow. Huwag kang yung nervous na nervous, huwag kang hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo kasi bigla kang tinawag. Okay, syempre, ito ang laging sinasabi ko to all my students, do not humiliate yourself in front of these people. Do not embarrass yourself in front of this audience, of course. Sarili mo yan. Ikaw ang makakapag-defend uh, the end, whether you like it or not. And then, of course, you are going to end by saying thank you or thank you very much, syempre. At yun ay napakahalaga and do not ever, ever forget that. Okay? That's the tips. So, let's see naman the guidelines here. One is relax. Relax mo lang sarili mo. Okay. If the audience or if somebody asks you to do something or to explain something, do not be in a hurry. Pagka-relax mo, wag agad magsimula. Ngumiti ka lang and that's it. Okay. And then deliver the speech using a template. Okay. Using a template here. So, may mga, syempre, may mga, may mga technique dito. Pag ito ay uh, uh, impromptu speaking, meron ditong TAS na tinatawag. Okay, T-A-S-S. So, mula ka sa thesis statement, and then sa argument, and then the support ng argument or evidence or fact, and then the summary of all of this. We have also I-A-D-C. Uh, you're going to discuss the issue. You start with the issue. What are the disadvantages or advantages of the issue? Start with advantages, and then disadvantages, and then your conclusion about the issue. Okay, that's the... Uh, That's the one of the secrets that you're going to do in the impromptu speaking. Or pag naalala mo naman yung five who's, or five, sorry, five W's, for example, yung who's, sino ba ang involved dito, where, saan nangyari, when, kailan, what, why. Itong mga ito, no, the five W's na lagi natin ginagamit. So, these are the things that is really very, very important, okay? So, number four, a review when there is nothing to say. There may be times in the middle of the speech that the impromptu speakers can't think of anything to say. It is suggested that he summarizes what has been said. Most likely, he could think of something to say towards the end of summary. So, this one, pag uh, uh, sa isip mo habang nagsasalita ka niya impromptu speaking, dapat alam mo na mayroon pa ba akong sasabihin, okay? Ano pa ba ang dapat mo sabihin dito? Uh, minsan kasi nawawala tayo. So, dapat focus ka lang kung ano yung topic, kung ano yung itinanong sa iyo, okay? Para syempre hindi ka mawala dito sa ating impromptu speaking. So, next one is the manuscript speech. 
or pwede rin sabihin natin na ito ay reading a manuscript or the read speech here. Siyempre, that's really very important. So, what is that manuscript speech? So, delivering a speech from a text written word for word. This is a good method especially for speakers who want to practice and advance the delivery of their speech, consequently ensuring that they will not lose words. Okay, ito naman yung talagang binabasa mo. But be sure na pag nagbabasa ka, ito ay conversational pa rin at the same time. At dapat ito rin inaintindihan talaga ng mga tao kasi binabasa mo na nga siya, eh, di ba? So what are the description that we are talking here? Speaking with advanced preparation, ito talaga ay na, 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 nakapag-research ka na about this thing. Planned and rehearsed speech, pwede mong practicing ang paulit-ulit. Reading aloud a written language, pwede mong basahin ito okay para mas gamay na gamay mo siya. How about the speaking situations na ito ginagamit? Newscasting with a teleprompter or an autocue device. Ito yung manakita natin sa mga anchors, no? newscasters. Presenting the legal proceedings and verdict in court. Ito sa mga, uh, sa mga courts no, natin nalalaman na kikita. So, reading the rules and criteria in a contest. So, dapat ito talaga ibabasahin. Hindi na kailangang memoryahin, okay, the criteria. I know that everybody is uh, familiar with this thing, okay? Next, of course, is the advantages. What's the advantages here? Exact repetition of the written words and guided speech. Talaga ito naman ay talagang kung ano yung sinulat mo, yun din naman pwede mong basahin talaga, okay? At kasi guided ka talaga. Uh, sabi ko nga kanina, meron kang sinusundan, meron kang plano dito, meron kang template, okay? Or not the template, but you have of course the uh, the frame or the outline. What's the disadvantages? So, boring and uninteresting presentation. Pag ikaw ay basa ka lang ng basa, walang... Uh, Walang uh, pagbabago sa boses mo, halimbawa, okay? Lacks audience rapport or connection. Kasi nga, basa ka ng basa, nalilimutan mo siyempre. Sometimes yung mga audience mo na merong kababasa mo, nalilimutan mo sila na nandun lang pala sila sa harapan mo. Okay, so it's so boring for them, siyempre. So what are the tips? You're going to rehearse the speech over and over again until you sound natural. Practice ka lang ng practice. Remember that practice makes perfect. That's really very important. And then, of course, you observe accomplished news anchors and note how conversation they sound when they deliver the news. Siyempre, so man manunood ka siyempre. When I was young, I, t I used to watch Tina Munzon Palma. Siya kasi ay nasa Channel 7 pa. Talagang tuwan-tuwa ako. Sina Angelo Castro. Ginagaya ko sila. Nagbabasa ako ng librong English o kaya ng English na newspaper. Binabasa ko sila in front of the mirror kahit mali-mali ang aking uh, pagbigas or pronunciation. Basta, binabasa ko siya. Gusto kong tularin si Tina Monson Palma. Sabi ko, that's one of my dreams to be a, to be a broadcaster, syempre. Okay? So, let's have now the guidelines for this one, which is really very important. So, uh, let's have now the guidelines here. Okay. Number one is, don't rush. So, a good speaker, even if reading from a script, is to utter, on the average, 140 words per minute. This speech rate is not too slow for the audience to get bored and not too fast for the audience. Huwag ka pa rin magmadali. Kahit sa mga speeches, kahit anong klaseng speech ang gagawin mo, do not be in a hurry. Okay, that's really very important. Number two there is, of course, memorize the first and the last line. It is true that the speech is called reading from a manuscript. However, Memorizing or at least familiarizing the opening and closing lines will allow the speaker to look and focus at the audience at the start and at the end, accordingly establishing rapport. So, dapat alam mo yung simula mo kasi minsan pag alam mo yung simula mo, nasusunod-sunod na up to the end. Pero pag nawala ka doon sa isa, doon sa una, mawawala ka rin. So, dapat gamay mo rin. In other words, dapat nagpa-practice ka talaga. So, number three, look at the audience at the end of a sentence or at the beginning of a new one. So, that's one of the techniques also. Kailangan na uh, titingin ka rin sa kanila. You are going to glance at the audience once in a while. Maintaining the connection in a speech delivered by reading a manuscript is hard. So, it is suggested that the utterance of a sentence should begin or end with a glance to the audience. Titingin ka pa minsan-minsan. Okay, para hindi ka rin mawala. Na nalalaman ng audience na andun sila talaga. Okay? Know when to pause. So, proper phrasing will definitely add to the clarity of the message. This will enhance the message's impact since the speech is prepared beforehand 
Identifying on which part of the speech will require a long pause, a short pause, or even a stop will definitely be helpful. So, hindi ko yung dire-direcho ka lang habang binabasa mo yung iyong ginagawa. So, dapat ikaw yung nag stop din. Siyempre, alam mo kung kailan mag-stop, kailan mo kung ilan yung dire-direcho. Pero remember, do not be in a hurry. And number five, practice several times. Okay? There is a mistaken belief that since the speech is written on, oh, the speech is written on, doesn't have to spend much time in practicing. Cliche but true, practice makes perfect. The success of a speech delivered by reading from a manuscript is still through rehearsals, applying especially the aforementioned guidelines, okay? That's very important. Kaya ano ka kagaling, you're going to practice pa rin, napakalaga pa rin ang practice, okay? Kaya anong gawin mo? Practice, practice, practice. Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Okay, the last one is the memorized speech. What is that memorized speech? Delivering a speech that is recalled verbatim from a text. It is done by preparing a written speech and then memorize it word for word. This is best done when conveying a short speech like introducing a speaker or presenting or accepting an award. So, kailangan ito ay talagang you're going to memorize it with your heart. So, dapat ay nagsulat ka yung kanina, no? for example, sa... Uh, sa iyong ginawang script, kailangan memory mo to, especially pag alam mo na ikaw ang tatanggap halimbawa ng award. Okay, that's really very important yung mga taong papasalamatan mo siya. Siyempre, kung sino pa. Anong description ng memorized speech? Speaking with advanced preparation, planned and rehearsed speech, reciting a written message word for word from memory. Okay, talagang ikaw ay magpa-practice ka pa rin dito, advance at paggagawa mo dito, nag-rehearse ka, nag-research ka at the same time, ito ay nakaplano talaga kung anong gagawin mo, meron pa rin outline. How about the speaking situation? Saan ito ginagawa or ginagamit? When performing in a stage play, when you are going to perform in a stage play, whether you like it or not, you are going to memorize your script. When you deliver a declamation, a rhetorical or literary piece, or uh, for example, yung mga... Uh, declamation pieces natin or orations natin no? or, or rhetorical pieces that's really very important you memorized it from the beginning up to the end when an actor or actress in a scene performs a script from memory lalo na kung ikaw ay may kasasabay ng mga galing ng mga artista for example that's really very important that you memorized your lines okay kasi ikaw ay uh, mapapahiya okay what's the advantages of memorized speech Exact repetition of the written words from memory, free to move around the stage. So, pag memorya mo to, yun ang ginagawa natin when we were in high school or when we were in elementary. Balit ulit natin, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper, a peck of pickled pepper, Peter Piper. Balit ulit tayo hanggang mag-memorya natin, okay? Hanggang mag-gamay natin, samay natin, syempre. And then, at the same time, you are free to move sa stage, syempre, or sa in front of the people, siyempre, in front of many people. What are the disadvantages of memorized speech? Uh, speakers might end up speaking in a monotone pattern, okay? Alternatively, or she might take a fast pace. Siyempre, pag hindi mo nakita or naramdaman, baka ikaw ay na monotone na wala na yung rising, falling intonation, no? Ng boses mo because memorya mo na siya, nakalimot ka na, may audience nga pala na talagang ikaw ay pinapakinggan, okay? When the speaker cannot control his or her stage fright, he or she might have difficulty remembering his or her memorized speech. If you do not know how to add lib, syempre, at ikaw ay nasumpong syempre ng stage fright, talagang sometimes malilimutan mo kung ano yung iyong linya at dun ka mawawala, okay? Next, what are the tips that you're going to do? You rehearse the speech over and over again until you sound natural and then feel confident. Ganyan tayo when we were in elementary or in high school, no? talagang we should have to memorize this whether we like it or not. Okay? Observe how actors, actresses perform their script in a theater, television, or movie scenes. So, dapat alam natin yan. Mag-observe ba tayo? Alam natin dapat itong mga ganito, syempre, para mas okay. So, next, of course, is... Uh, Memorizing the speech may be a bad idea because of the following liabilities. So, pag doon nung memora tayo ng mga speech natin, sometimes parang meron din yung, not only the disadvantage, tingnan natin kung anong mga, uh, yung mga bad things dito, ano. Speakers need enormous amount of time memorizing the, the text, syempre. So, kailangan talaga we have enough time, bibigyan natin ng oras, no, so that we can memorize our lines 
or our speech. At some point during the delivery, the speaker might suddenly forget what is next. This could cause embarrassment or panic. Once disregarded, he might be unable to get back to track. So, ang gawa ko rito, I have my... Uh, what is that? I have my... Of course, you, you have to memorize. Uh, I, I know how to ad-lib dapat. You should ha- know how to ad-lib. Para mas alam, pero hindi ka mawawala. Sometimes, ganun eh. Pag nawala tayo, biglang nawala sa linya natin, yung ating na memorya, hindi na natin alam ang kasunod. The memory work in the fear of forgetting parts of the speech can also make speakers sound mechanical, okay? Minsan ay eh, ganun nangyayari. Parang uh, nalilimutan na natin kung ano ang dapat natin gawin, okay? Na, eh, kasi minsan natatakot na tayo, nahihiya na tayo, syempre. So, hindi na natin alam kung saan na tayo, okay? Hindi na maintindi sa mukha natin. So, even if the speech is wholly remembered, a speaker would be speaking from the memory, not from the heart. So, this could cause a delivery that is lifeless or unenergetic. More like a robot than a human being. So, because ito yung memorya natin, nalilimutan natin na yung ating ginagawa, hindi na from our heart, okay? At ito pala ay, uh, ano na, nangyayari to, nito ay dire-diretso lang ating pagsalita, okay? Wala nang damdamin, wala na sa puso natin, okay? So, what are the guidelines here? Of course, you're going to maintain the 140 word per minute speech rate. Delivering the speech too rapidly or too slow will sacrifice the points in the speech. So, wag din magmamadali. As I've told you before, from the very beginning, kahit na yung iba-ibang types ng mga uh, speeches that I told you, okay, before, do not be in a hurry. You, you relax yourself, you calm yourself, and that's one of the techniques also. Number two, use hand gestures and movement. Since memorized speeches have, or the memorized speech, rather, have the tendency to be robotic, Hand gestures, walking through the platform, and body movement will lessen, if not eliminate the machine-like tendencies of this type of, of speech. You're going to use your hand gestures and movement, but not so over. You have to learn how to use your hand and your movement. Baka naman dahil na nanabuse ka, nakalimutan mo, kibu ko na kibu doon. So, malilito lang ang mga audience mo. Number three, include expressions in your voice. Another way of avoiding a mechanical speech delivery is by knowing how to vary the sound of your speech. To build a point, a speaker may raise his voice while he may lower it when making an aside. Okay? Or making aside, for example. Hindi yung basta kayo sabi nga kanina monotone ang boses mo, hindi ganon. But she know how to use the rising falling of the voice. Kung kailangan kailangan i, i... What do you call that? A little bit high of your voice, why not? Okay? So that the audience can understand you. That's the technique. And then, of course, memorize not just a speech, but also the outline of the speech. So, making an outline of the speech to be memorized and putting the same into memory will help a speaker go back to track if he is distracted at any part of the delivery. So, dapat ay uh, memorya mo talaga ito, okay? At syempre, memorya mo rin yung iyong outline kung ano na, okay? So, these are the four Types of speeches according to the manner of delivery. So here, of course, you have the activity by group or you can do this activity also uh, alone. Okay? So you can do this alone or you can discuss this through online. If you are in online or you can submit your hard copy also by this one. The group will given will be given 15 minutes to think. We are talking about the group here. Which among the four different speeches according to delivery is the best to you? Okay, write it in a whole yellow pad paper. At least three advantages and three disadvantages of your chosen speech. Discuss it in front, not more than three minutes. Or if you're alone, in other words, whether that is group or not, online or not, you're going to submit that in, for example, in your Google Classroom. Okay, through Google Classroom, it's accepted also, okay? And to make it easy. So, the questions here, this is speaking with the limited preparation, of course, that is extemporaneous speaking or extemporaneous speech, of course. So, number two here is speaking without advanced preparation, that is impromptu speaking or impromptu speech. Okay, number three, this is speaking with advanced preparation and reading aloud written language. 
So that is what the what is the answer? Manuscript speaking or manuscript speech or uh, read speech or reading by manuscript. Okay. Next one is uh, number four. Speaking with advanced preparation and reciting a written message word for word from memory. Okay. What's the answer? That is memorized speaking or memorized speech. And then uh, at this point, you'll be having your quiz which is really very uh, easy also to answer. This section here is to identify if the following are good or bad topics for the speech that you're going to deliver. Write G for good and B for bad. Okay, let's have now number one. The origin of alphabets. Two, a new beginning, a retirement speech. Three, Welcoming the freshman. Four, the first woman astronaut. Five, a birthday wish. Six, chemical warfare. Seven, a toast for forever, a best man's speech. Let's have number eight. Goodbye, Grandpa. A eulogy. Nine, the story of human rights. Ten, the reality show phenomenon. That's the end of the quiz, of course. So let's see now the correct answer, okay? So one, B, the origin of alphabets. Two, G, a new beginning, a retirement speech. Three, G, welcoming the freshmen. Four, B, the first woman astronaut. 5G, a birthday wish. 6B, chemical warfare. 7G, a toast for forever, a best man's speech. 8G, goodbye grandpa, a eulogy. 9B, the story of human rights. 10B, the reality show phenomenon. Of course, at this point, for further information, you look for a sample of each type of speeches according to the manner of delivery from the YouTube or from YouTube or from any sock man. Observe how the speaker deliver each type of speeches. What you're going to do is just observe, okay? Look for good speakers from the YouTube so that you will know when to pause, for example, okay? You can learn many things from the YouTube, from the so social media, from uh, from the Google, or you, you make a research about these people, okay? So that you will know. And then let's move now again to our objective to distinguish the extemporaneous, impromptu, manuscript, and memorized speeches. At least now we know now the differences of extempt, impromptu, manuscript, and memorized speeches. So at least we know now, okay? So at the end of the topic, uh, I would like to give you the food for thought here. Even though we do not communicate, I hope that you know what I feel for you. That's Pashano to Rizal. So at this point, thank you so much and God bless us all. So once again, I'm my porte. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. God bless everyone. God bless everyone. Keep safe.